Canadian. From Nutrient Ag Solutions, I'm Senior Meteorologist Andrew Pritchard with your Canadian Prairie Weather Story for Monday, June 17th, 2024. Another round of heavy rain along the southern border this week, but the active pattern really rolls on through the end of June. It'll be heaviest along the southern border over the next five to seven days, but there are chances for the entire prairie to see additional rounds of showers and storms over the next five to ten days. Trending warmer over the next five to ten days as well. Those high temperatures in the low to mid-teens to get the week started off, especially across the west. They'll be warming back up to, into the, uh, the middle 20s by the time we get to uh, next weekend. Looking at the last seven days of precipitation as forecast, really the folks who were left out were here across southern Alberta, southwestern Saskatchewan. We had some other kind of corridors here where it was a little bit lighter with heavier precipitation kind of spanning from Edmonton to Saskatoon to Regina through this corridor here. Then we had some uh, showers and storms bring some heavier precipitation anywhere from 15 to 30 millimeters from Calgary on it to the uh, east from there as well. So some corridors of heavier precipitation, some areas that got missed over the last seven days or so. And as we look at the, the you know satellite animation here, infrared satellite, you can see the flow of the jet stream. A couple things going on. We've got this area of low pressure off to the north, really kind of a double-barreled area of low pressure. You see this curl here, another little curl there. From these areas of low pressure, we've got a cold front extending back across the plains. And so we see a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity ongoing along one of those fronts. We have another front kind of extending back here into the northwest. And we see another push of jet stream uh, support coming in along that frontal boundary so that's why we expect several rounds of showers and thunderstorms kind of in this vicinity here so just kind of drawing the forecast on the satellite animation here just I, I really enjoy starting the morning looking at this because you can pick out a lot of what's driving the weather and then additionally we've got a lot of Gulf of Mexico moisture flowing northward uh, kind of riding a ridge of high pressure that's situated right about here so it is hot and muggy where I'm recording this video in the Midwestern US now looking at your radar, again, a lot of that heavier shower and thunderstorm activity along that first frontal boundary, that first cold front from parts of Wisconsin into Minnesota, Iowa, and Nebraska across the northern plains. But you see that next push of upper level support coming in from the northwestern U.S. So showers across Montana here this morning, and we'll see that shower and thunderstorm activity continue to expand through this corridor over the next few days. And then you see up here just some scattered showers. That's going to be really the theme further to the north over the next few days before we start to introduce the chances for heavier showers and storms across that region later on into the week. Now here's that frontal boundary I just drew in with all the shower and thunderstorm activity kind of ongoing right here. I'm kind of off screen bottom right recording this video. You see the temperatures already in the upper 20s where I am right now. It's a muggy upper 20s and those will be soaring into the 30s today and through the next seven days or so across the Midwest as we are kind of ground zero for the early rendition of the summertime ridge. And that's keeping you much cooler off to the north. Those temperatures in the single digits across central and southern Alberta, like five degrees, single digits. And then you can even find a zero as you make your way into some of the higher elevations here. Same thing as you work your way into some of the, the you know higher elevations of the northwest U.S. So it is cool through this corridor right here. It is hot down to the south and to the east of you. And that is why we have very strong jet stream winds racing in. Uh, between those two conflicting air masses and because the jet stream is racing in between those two conflicting air masses we have a lot of precipitation to talk about through that corridor this is your next seven days with the european ensemble model where the ridge of high pressure is situated right now it is dry but the flow around that keeps it very active across the northern plains and the southern portions of the prairie over the next five or six days as we look at week two though this is the last week of june really keeping the active corridor on going through the prairie kind of moving the ridge from you know the eastern u.s where it is this week the ridge pivots situates itself here over the southwest u.s so then we get flow coming over the top of that we still got a feed of gulf moisture here so we'll continue to see scattered showers and storms at the very least across the prairie during the last week of june the next 15 days overall the European Ensemble, where you see the green shading, that's where the forecast is for higher than average precipitation for the last two weeks of June. And of course, we see a lot of the prairie in that higher than normal uh, precipitation, you know, uh, you know, zone. It's really only kind of Peace River up toward Edmonton. You get kind of closer to uh, average, if not a little bit drier than average. But a lot of the prairie over the next 15 days, seeing a good chunk of moisture. 
A lot of that because of this big trough anchored across Western North America and this big ridge here across the Eastern half of North America. So we get the flow coming around the base of that trough, racing into the prairie, very fast flow, as I kind of showed you here between the, you know, the heat off to the East and the much cooler temperatures here across the Northwest, which is a very strong jet stream flow. Uh, between those two air masses and as we push forward through the next week or so we see this pattern not necessarily permanent in the way that it's set up here but it, it kind of does settle into this general theme we're going to lose the really deep trough across the northwest and across western canada that's going to allow some temperatures uh, or allow those temperatures to, to kind of warm from their current cooler state but we still keep pretty good jet stream support for precipitation in place across the region as we kind of ebb and flow between troughing across the border of the Pacific Ocean and uh, the Western North America. Now getting kind of detailed for the next three and a half days, we'll bring this back here, see the heavy showers and storms to our south start to lift into the region. This is your Monday afternoon, evening, Monday night, Tuesday morning. This just takes us through the day on Tuesday. This is now Tuesday night. We see this system pulling away as we get into Wednesday and Thursday. Precipitation becomes much more isolated. We'll start to clear up and warm up as we get to the last part of the work week. So total precipitation between today, Monday, June 17th, and Thursday, June 20th. You see some corridors here of 20 to 30 millimeters, uh, you know, across southeastern Saskatchewan into southern Manitoba. You know, some heavier showers possible across far southern portions of Alberta into southwestern Saskatchewan, but we're talking more like 5 to 10 millimeters. And then as you get north from there, much drier, at least over the next three to four days. As I add in the 10 days, or the, I'm sorry, the seven days that follow to make this the forecast for the next 10 days. So now we're looking all the way through Thursday, June 28th. Now you're seeing much of the prairie getting into that 20 to 30, if not 30 to 40 millimeter range. Although still some corridors here from Southern Alberta into Southwestern, South Central portions of Saskatchewan, maybe getting missed here. You know, you see that forecast anywhere from five to 10, maybe 10 to 20. I would have to uh, say that if anyone's going to get, you know, repeatedly missed and end up on the drier side over the next 10 to 15 days, it's going to be right in this corridor here with better chances for heavy precipitation across the south early and then across the north as we get into the weekend and next week. So here's what we can finally look at the precipitation forecast, kind of timing this out over the next 10 days. We'll use the uh, European AI forecast system. This shows us the next couple of days. You see that first round of showers and storms. Lifting through southern portions of the prairie today through Wednesday, we quiet down as we get to the last part of the day Wednesday, really moving into a pattern that really gives us just kind of isolated shower and thunderstorm activity as we head into the late part of the week. But then as we get into the weekend, this is when the next storm system pushes in. We start to get more in the way of organized precipitation once again. This would be uh, getting into yeah, that Friday, Saturday, June 21st, 22nd time frame. There's a system lifting through. We get another one that comes through Sunday into Monday, June 23rd and 24th. So we get a little break late week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, before we kind of get into a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday active run again uh, with showers and storms forecast across the region. So total precipitation the next 10 days. This is a pretty kind of you know broad, smoothed out look, but you see the pattern once again, heavier precipitation south along the border over the next few days. And then we get another round of heavier precipitation sweeping through as we get into the weekend and early next week. But if anyone's really going to get missed here, I would put my money on it being portions of southern Alberta into southwestern Saskatchewan. Of course, not a huge surprise. Climatologically, that is the drier zone of the prairie. So here's your chance of picking up a half an inch or more of total precipitation over the next week or so before I talk to you again next Monday, June 24th. Where you see the red shading, that's where you are most likely, again, right here across southern Alberta. I'm sorry, southern Saskatchewan getting into southern Manitoba. Maybe a chance here, far southern Alberta, as you get into the you know higher elevations, you'll have a little bit of help here, uh, squeezing out some more moisture over the next few days or so. But then you get north of this zone, and by and large, over the next seven days, you're talking about you know scattered showers and storms, not a real heavy soaking widespread rain areas north of Highway 16. Those temperatures over the next 10 days, you see the cooler anomalies fade. You know, we don't necessarily become ground zero for heat over the next 10 days across the prairie, but those temperatures will be warming up quite steady and quite dramatically as we head through the next 10 days or so. 13 for the high today, 25 by the time you get to Saturday and Sunday in Calgary. Edmonton, a very similar look, 14 today, 25 for the high next Sunday. So there's your warm up 
Regina, a little more herky-jerky there, but still warming up from the upper teens to the mid-20s over the next seven days. Very similar in Saskatoon. And then here in Winnipeg, where you're a little warmer today, 21 today, 17 tomorrow behind this first front that moves through. 22 Wednesday, 25 Thursday, and then holding steady in the mid-20s as we head through the weekend into early next week. I'll talk to you again seven days from today. That would be June 24th. Have a wonderful week.